I've always wondered how Dennis Rodman would fit in today's NBA. Now I have a pretty good idea. Jared Vanderbilt is a defensive specialist with almost no scoring game, hustles around like a maniac, and is one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. Here's a typical Vando highlight. The Lakers throw it away in the backcourt, and he comes flying out of nowhere to save a layup, and if we rewind it, he started this play in the front court, realized what was happening, and just hit the gas to erase a basket. Or a play like this, where he crashes the boards for an offensive rebound, follows the ball to the corner, then as he's retreating, steps in front of the ball one way, then turns the other way to nab a pass out of the air. And this is like a defensive Euro step with a big stride in one direction so he can stiff arm the ball on the other side. Extraordinary. Rodman was a two-time defensive player of the year, and Vanderbilt has yet to make an all-D team. So I'm not making a comparison about their impact because they played in totally different eras. But there are stylistic similarities, like lower shot blocking numbers, despite both of these guys having some vertical rim protection. Rodman was known for hounding multiple stars, and Vanderbilt has bothered a number of big-time weapons in the last few weeks alone. He was all over Devin Booker when he was on the court, drawing multiple offensive fouls in this game by picking him up in the backcourt and pestering him around screen after screen. And Booker ended the night with a really great stat line, but he did more damage with Vando on the bench. With Jared on the floor, Booker committed six turnovers, and the Suns posted a wobbly 105 offensive rating. Here he is away from the ball, loses track of Booker for a second, then spins off the screen to stay inside the roll man and recover back to the ball. And then after Booker's stuck, he denies him another great catch, and it's a wonderful defensive possession. Against Brandon Ingram, Vando put on a screen navigating masterclass, nearly blocking this jumper. And at 6'9, he can slide around screens like a smaller guard. So Ingram asks for another pick, he gets around that, then uses his length to bother the shot. Down in New Orleans, Ingram had a bumpy first half, going two for eight with four turnovers. And I love how Vanderbilt bothers these big wing scorers like this with his combination of quick feet and size. It was a similar story against Luka Doncic, who went 10 for 22 with six turnovers in their last meeting. And while this was more of a team effort, look at a play like this one, where he can deny the pass and still recover after it slips through, and then stay with Luca's stop and step back jumper. I love how Vando gets right into a superstar's space, crowding them a ton, which led to this huge clutch turnover, and that wasn't nearly as impressive as this incredible deflection and save going into the stands for the over-the-head breakaway layup pass. And Vandy stayed with Luca, hit it off his hands, then went after the ball, and it wasn't the full Rodman, but these guys never stopped moving. While Rodman defended players of all shapes and sizes, he still read the larger action on the floor. He's on Scottie Pippen in the post here, reads Michael Jordan's eyes, and jumps in front for a steal. We recently talked about peel switching and how when a shot-blocking teammate came to help, Dennis slid over to cover his man. Vanderbilt has a similar ability to pester his primary matchup, chase him around screens, and keep him in front of him, then peel off when needed, and he's big enough to guard plenty of centers, picking up a touch foul here at the last second. Things were a little different back in Rodman's day when defenders could be more physical, and that was an offensive foul with a little off-arm discard. And one of the Worm's greatest attributes was slithering in front of players to draw offensive fouls. His quick feet would be really valuable today, but as we detailed last year, offensive players are now getting free throws on a ton of these kinds of calls, which is a reminder of how different defense is now. 
With that said, he probably would have hunted a ton of charges today by sliding over in help situations, and one skill that's always valuable is a high revving motor. Dennis was always banging around and bouncing all over the place to make plays. Again, look how physical and post-oriented the game was then, sliding with James Worthy before contesting, and then taking off down court on his bicycle, and it just felt like Rodman never stopped out there, which helped him a ton as a rebounder, because he'd basically sprint into his box outs to battle for that interior position. Vanderbilt is also one of the most active players today, chasing down rebounds, picking up full court, and hustling back to make plays. But for non-vertical defenders, today's game is rarely about banging around on the block. Instead, it's about chasing players around screens or switching onto penetrators on the outside. Rodman was certainly stronger, famously holding position with Shaq, but Vanderbilt might be quicker at 6'9", which helps him cover more ground in a spaced out game, then slam on the brakes and change direction as he recovers, and this sharp deceleration and recovery help with the closeout demands in today's game. He's guarding the wing here, but is pulled over in help position, and when his teammate falls behind, Vando slides over to bother Booker, then somehow recovers as the ball arrives, only to swivel and defend the drive perfectly. Compare that to the typical closeout demands of Rodman's era, where there's less ground to cover and fewer changes in direction. A versatile, non-shot-blocking forward today isn't banging in the post, but instead he's helping or using his length to cover passing lanes, and Vanderbilt has the ability to take these coast to coast all by himself. Here's an incredible example of his hustle, sprinting down the floor after a turnover, outracing everyone just to slam on the brakes in the paint so he can take away this pass while reading the ball handler so he can explode to the wing instead arrives with the ball, then turns and helps on the drive, only to bounce back to the shooter and contest the shot, and the man is an energizer bunny. He's also incredibly quick shooting the gap, which catches tons of passers off guard and leads to easy runouts on the other end. And that speed and length are one thing, but a lot of these plays are created by incredible reaction time and anticipation. Here's one on the weak side, where he moves over to help on pick and roll, but doesn't overcommit once Anthony Davis recovers. Then he stays there in case Davis needs to help on the drive, reads the ball handler's eyes, and plucks this thing out of the air like Odell Beckham. This one might be even better, where he's zoning up two shooters on the weak side, closes instantly to the wing, then doesn't bite on the ball fake, only to deflect the pass and then dive and save it to a teammate. And again, Rodman probably would have laid out for this one, but the most impressive part here is the hand-eye coordination to tip the ball, then go track it down and save it right before landing out of bounds. Of course, Rodman's defining play was the rebound, and specifically offensive rebounds, where he still holds the highest single season and career offensive rebounding percentage ever tracked. The thing is, it's no longer viable for a player to roam near the basket, hunting for rebounds without any other involvement in the action. Non-shooting big men today can hang out in the dunker spot just outside the lane on the baseline, and there are rebounds to be had there, but they could not circle around into driving lanes and completely muck up spacing while not even setting screens, all just to carve out position in a crowd and out-tip defenders to the ball. Another option now is to set the screen, and some of today's best offensive rebounders are giants who clean up misses like this, but more likely than not, non-shooters like this are spaced behind the three-point line, and they have to crash the boards from the perimeter and time up rebounds that way. There are certainly still situations where Rodman could sneak in on an impending shot and seal smaller players with his strength advantage, but those opportunities aren't abundant, 
which is probably why all of the top offensive rebounders today are centers who set a ton of screens and then roll to the hoop. Vanderbilt doesn't set nearly as many ball screens as those rim-running big men, so his offensive rebounds mostly come from the perimeter when he crashes as a shot goes up. And on these plays, his timing and nose for the ball do remind me of Rodman, reading which way he should go around the defender to tip this rebound and keep it alive. Vando's vertical athleticism also helps him here, basically stealing boards from defenders, and he can creep in like this and chase a rebound because he can also get back on defense with all that speed and effort. Rodman wasn't super vertical on the glass, but he was a master of tipping it to himself, and Vanderbilt will tip a few from time to time, including this masterpiece, flicking it with the left hand so he could tap it to a teammate with the right, and then after he's able to get to his feet, sort of serves as a screener and rolls home for dinner. The rest of his scoring game basically comes off of cutting, which create rebounding chances on shots and make him a threat as a non-shooter since he has some finishing ability charging toward the basket. If those cuts don't always lead to easy buckets, Vando's also a sneaky little passer off the dribble, and passing was probably Rodman's most underrated skill. He was a very willing extra passer, and while he didn't see everything, he could make amazing passes when he did spot an opening. I'm not sure Vanderbilt is quite the extra passer Rodman was, but in today's game, he'll make a beautiful short roll read when needed, and since he can dribble so comfortably, he can make more dynamic passes like grabbing and going in transition and sliding in that beauty. The trickiest part about someone like Vanderbilt today is that his lack of shooting or on-ball creation means you're playing four on five on offense sometimes because teams will just outright ignore him. All that cutting and offensive rebounding help a little, but he can throw off spacing in lineups, and that's not always easy to remedy. Look, time machine games are impossible. That's not the goal here. And Rodman's unique style of play clearly made him a good or even great player during his era. So instead, I want to highlight that a player with most of these skills today would probably look quite different. They couldn't live in the paint, they'd be switched to the perimeter a ton on defense, and their entire offensive function would change because of all the spacing and shooting out on the floor. So I don't know how good Rodman would be now, but I do know that Jared Vanderbilt has a bunch of similar skills, and that's made him one of the best non-center offensive rebounders we have. He's a sneaky little passer, and at worst, he's one of the best defenders in the entire NBA. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinking basketball. We have our brand new stats boards that update daily. Also, we have additional content on our new channel, More Thinking Basketball. I'm fascinated by this kind of topic, so let me know what you think down below. Thanks, as always, for watching all the way through. And of course, and especially with the playoffs around the corner, I do hope you're having a great day.